All right, so I wanted to sharpen my sword with you. Yes, sir. On this interview because I respect the hell out of you. Like what? And even the conversation that we had on the phone when we set this up, like it's very few people that you talk to that spark joy and natural profound energy in your spirit. It says, um, iron sharpens iron, steel sharpens steel, but when a man sharpens another man, it, it, it means more because men don't rust. We produce mm. and get better. True and do. You see what I'm saying? So, <laughs> and I stole that. That's not mine, y'all. Produce and get loose. <laughs> but, but at the end of the day, I wanted to ask you, I'm going to quote a ROM, a rap, hip-hop classic album. I want you to give me what that means to you. I usually do a lot of rapid fires, but this, I want to go into the mind of the MC, and then we're going to go into the project. Okay. Freedom is a road seldom traveled by the multitude. What does that mean to you? Most people never become free. Now, well, yeah. oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess because they don't travel a path, which is a narrow one, to self-discovery. So now, many distractions. Now, now, now in, our, in, our, in our English language, which is the worst language ever made, we have words that are used that give no spiritual cleansing in it. Like when you say, this next quote, only God can, can, can judge me. Only God can judge me means so many things. Because judgment is condemnation or judgment is decision making. So when we say freedom, are we talking about freedom, liberty, democracy, emancipation? It has so many deep multi-layers, like a double entendre or something in Iran. How do you as an MC give clarity to your bars, yet give somebody the option to think and produce synapses in the brain that fire off and gives them just inspiration over just joy. How do you put your arms together? Um, I do what inspires me, kind of, you know. Um, but flow before, like even meaning sometimes. At this point, I'm about riding a wave, not inter interrupting it for a big ass paragraph of primordial. You know, I'm not trying to give the periodic table of elements, mm -hmm. right? But I will give you sodium. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Then I give you oxygen. Ah. <laughs> then I might that. give you some hydrogen, you know? Then when you step back, you're like, oh shit, he gave me the periodic table. One spoon at a time mm -hmm. with some honey in it, mm -hmm. you know? So it's, it's mixed in, mixed in the, the ingredients. I listen to Planet Asia, it said two bottles of jewels, one spoon of ignorance. Mm -hmm. Sometimes two, three spoons of ignorance, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? <laughs> Sometimes. The camera, the camera gave out, it fainted from the power in this interview. Oh. <laughs> Say that. Damn. Check this out though. The measure of a race is defined by the integrity of its woman. What does that mean to you? Oh, that means um, a nation can only rise as high as women. You know, the, the first teacher of the child, the, really the, uh, the nurturer of the family. So let's talk about that wisdom given with ignorance. In our culture, our culture under American influence is very maternal. Women run the culture. But whenever it comes to finances, money, and even the indoctrinization of people, men suppress women. In 2016, late 17 and now 18, the rise of the female voice has been phenomenal in hip hop. Again, thank God that we have females out actually rhyming on a high level, but there's been an underground war between the conscious rapper and the female rapper. Yeah. And the war has been, there's not enough female conscious rappers that get that shine, and anybody who's ignorant as a female gets that love. Two spoonfuls of knowledge, one spoonful of ignorance. Yeah. As a person who participates in the culture, how do you see the fine line, not only within yourself, but in how we characterize our ladies and how we should treat our ladies apart from the fanaticism of Hollywood entertainment. I feel like 
one, um, so like, female MCs in hip hop don't get enough love. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. And sometimes, because like, it's like, oh my goodness, it's a woman that's doing this. Uh, and they're so focused on that aspect of it that you miss the message. Like, you listen to Invincible from Detroit. You know, she talks about the Israeli-Palestinian, you know, <laughs> conflict. She, you know, she's, she's from out there. You got Eternia, you got Jean Grey, you got Todd Phoenix, you got Bahamadia, you know it. what I'm saying? You got I Frequency, you got Shelly Farrell, you got a lot of Newark MCs, you got Rod Digger. You know, um, there's, there's, there's plenty. Jane Doe. Jane yeah. Doe was nice. Yeah. I got her bootleg album somewhere. That the one that didn't come out, I, I got my hands on that sometimes. You know? yeah. It was hard. I think 88 Keys produced some joints on there. Yeah, yeah. But um, um, yeah. Everyone's. I think the subcategory is kind of getting away. Mm -hmm. You know, on the novelty aspect. So it's like, oh my God, it's a woman that can rap, and you, yo, she just poured her heart out. Did you hear what she said? Exactly. Besides, right. oh, you know, the spectacle of, you know, and then that also um, begets the, the, the question of like, all right, why should it surprise you that, you know what I mean, a woman's good at rapping, you know what I'm saying? Because when people, it's like this day and age, of course, the hip hop's been around for a long time. Thank God it's not a sausage fest. I said hip hop's a sausage fest at best. So give that this and women shit a rest, sexual assaulter. Crack you in the head with the Malta. Rourke Jr. meet John Hardigan's revolver. Like a Mack truck to a frogger. Spin that Sonic Hedgehog ya. I burp and I cough ya. Sambos, let's get it snapping. I'm Thanos. <laughs> <laughs> I love no, that. No, but, yeah. I yeah. love that because, like, Rhapsody's album destroyed Rhapsody. a lot of people's understanding of how dope a woman in 2000s hip hop can be. When everybody's talking about they got a one young woman right now who blew up off the song I'm a cow. Fine as she is. Oh, that, those cats. Yeah, fine as she is, it's novelty. Then you have um, another woman who made a song about how sperm tastes. A novelty that's gonna die. Tara Wack, yo. Listen to Tara Wack. She's better than all of them. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, I'm I, sorry. There's, there's, so, there's so much like, yo, this is what happens in hip hop, yo. It's like this, right? Um, <laughs> forgive me for saying this, right? It's like seeing a gorilla that rides a, a, a bike. You're surprised to see a gorilla riding a bike, right? But there's motherfucking gorillas that's, that's programming shit in outer space, right? Or people, people that are programming things. And we, it's like, we focus on D and F students that show glimmers of light or that clock that's broken and is right twice a day. And we're ignoring the student. <laughs> that can freaking cure the ills of the world. Yeah. Because our standards are so low. And that's, that's when I think of, think of all the MCs that we love. Imagine if Rakim was to come out today. His equivalent. Of today's generation? He would be overlooked. Lupe Fiasco. Lupe Fiasco. First off, what happened with him was Atlantic Records. Yeah. And that needs to be like said. He yeah. is a victim of Atlantic Records. There's no way this dude, first off, that every lyricist respected when he came out. You know what I'm saying? He had Jay-Z behind him, he had Pharrell behind him, he had Kanye behind him, but he's overtly Muslim. His stuff is about, he's not gonna put out no bullshit. They shelved his album. They made him redo the, uh, what L-U-P end never came out. It was a triple disc album, shelved. That was Lasers, the they made him redo that like five times. What we got was the bullshit yeah. compared to what he had planned for us. You know, Lupe is an example of even being that intelligent and sitting down with them, look at how, what happened to him. So I'm like, nah, this cat's smarter than me and that happened to him? I ain't sitting with no Atlantic Records <laughs> or none of them cats. Yeah. What I need them for? Like, yo, as far as like external validation, that's what's so great about the internet now. I don't have to appeal to some dude who looks nothing like me, who's not from my community, and has the worst interests for me in my community, and I have to appeal to him, and, <laughs> and then hope that he invests in me, and, and takes most of the money and earnings from the art that I created, right, all because I need external validation from this European man, or industry. I have it, it doesn't, how can we be Negros Americanos and do that? True. 
I slept with a machete from Panama, and I'm gonna come in some guy in his freaking sweater vest gonna tell me what to do? Hell no. Might just walk up in your studio session, smack your engineer. <laughs> <laughs>